frustration that it took him so long to get inside. That's how it goes sometimes. You, you end the fight with a win, but with a lot of frustration. We'll see. Eric Bonet survives 10 rounds. Was very powerful, Sergey Lipinets, who seemed to get stronger and stronger as this one went on. Did Lipinets do enough to go to 14 and 1? We're about to find out. I don't think. I've made many discoveries in my life. We're here real time. It's uh, August the 4th, uh, 2018. 8, 19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. You know, Sergey Lipinets is just not that good to me. And for those who don't know, he fought Mikey Garcia earlier this year in uh, February. And uh, he lost his IBF 140-pound and, um, and, um, uh, title. He's now fighting at 147 pounds. And he fought um, a guy by the name of uh, Eric Bonet, who is four and four in his last eight fights. And most notably, he fought Sean Porter in 2015 on PBC on Spike. I covered that fight. Eric Bonet was using angles on him. Didn't have the necessary skill, in my opinion, to get a clear cut victory over Sergey Lempinets. But Sergey Lempinets didn't look good. And truth be told, in my opinion, he's food for the top guys at 147 pounds, whether it be um, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, and even a Jeff Horn will probably beat him. I'm dead serious. No disrespect. I just don't think that 147 is where he should be. I think that he should stay at 140, and he could probably pursue his 140-pound title that he lost or the 140-pound the title he lost to Mikey Garcia because Mikey Garcia may vacate. Word is the IBF have ordered uh, Mikey Garcia, unified WBC IBF 140-pound champion, to fight um, uh, Richard Comey. If he doesn't fight him, he has to vacate. Mikey Garcia wants to fight Earl Spence on pay-per-view, likely in December of this year. Anyway, waiting for them to uh, read the cards. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to look at the 100 and, and, and um, 47 pound division, and I'm trying to see like where he matches up. For example, Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter is fighting about a month from now, September the 8th on Showtime. Keith Thurman is supposed to be returning in October. The name that's been floating around for him is uh, Jose Zito Lopez. You got Errol Spence, who likely will be fighting Mikey Garcia, as we talked about. We also have uh, Devin Alexander and Andre Berto, who's fighting the night on the big event of this PBC on Fox card. I mean, maybe he can fight the winner of that, you know, and it looks like... Um, Jordan is, um, oh wait, let's listen in, let's listen in. Entire second career. Eric Bonet makes it to the end of this one against Sergey Lipinets, but he took some shots as this one went on. Yeah, um, not as much action, I don't think, as we expected throughout the fight, but throughout the fight you had some big punches right there. Sergey Lipinets with a big overhand right. Eric Bonet coming back, he landed a good one-two throughout the, mm. throughout the fight, and that was a big right hand right there. And then Sergey ending the fight with a big left hook right here as Eric Bonet was on his bicycle. And again, like I said before, that, that punch was landed because Sergey had the, the full movement that he needed to land a big punch like that, which was something he lacked throughout the fight. Just the fifth time, Sergey Lipin. Now, with those shots, you may think that it was an exciting fight and Sergey Lipinets was just uh, dominating. That's not the case at all. Your score totals. Judge at ringside, Robin Taylor has about 95-95 a draw. Mm. Overruled by judges John Vasili, who has it 99-91, and Frank Lombardi, who scores about 98-92. For your winner, by majority decision, Sergey the Samurai Lipinets. Maybe in some ways, normally you have one judge that's completely off to the side. You kind of raise your eyebrows, but that sort of makes sense that you can see somebody seeing it that way. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised um, um, uh, with the draw. My bad, it's this fucking moth or whatever is up there. I'm hoping it don't fly down and descend on me. But as I was saying, looking at the 147-pound um, division, 
it's hard to see where he goes next and if the process is going to be a long building process for him in regards to hold on let me see if he does a post fight interview he took, you know, those rounds that they gave him. The loss to Mikey Garcia. Lipinets back in the win column as he handles the veteran, Eric Bonet. He's a former world champion. So is Kid Chocolate, Peter Quinlan. Okay. Um, so he was trying to get, um, Sergey Lipinets was trying to get into the World Boxing Super Series tournament. But for whatever reason, he wasn't accepted and or invited. I don't know the full story behind that. And that tournament is including guys like Kuro Rolak, um, and Dorado uh, Troyanovsky. Um, these two guys, Yijit and uh, Baracek, are fighting for the IBF title that Mikey Garcia vacated and moved back down to 140. Um, and this is, I mean, right now the, the, the 140 pound division is tied up and he can't get a title shot with the way things are looking anytime soon because Maurice Hooker is going to be fighting Alex Salcedo I actually talked to Maurice Hooker I'm going to upload that uh, video you have a uh, Jose Ramirez who is going to be taking on Antonio Rosco you have Regis Pogre and Josh Taylor who are both in the World Boxing Super Series so I guess he figured 147 was the place to go and you know start trying to make a name for himself there but you know, in my opinion, I don't think he should rush it. I think that if he's going to, you know, fight at 147, you know, then he needs to slowly work his way up in the 147-pound division because all these guys at the top, you know, beat him. If, for example, hell, even a Jesse Vargas at fighting at 147 probably beats him, in my opinion. You know, judging on what we've seen tonight. Now, I'm not saying he's not tough. I'm just saying, you know, and I understand this video may come off as me being hard on him. I'm just saying that right now, I don't see nothing special in him. Anyway, I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.